Yeah. Widow, big one. I got him. Really? Yep. Uh, I think it's in northern. Yep, yep. There's a sorry, mosquito buzzing in my face. That uh, broken oh, yeah, hourglass. Yeah. Yep. 100%. She's big. Oh, yeah. She's really big. A Gigas Northern. <laughs> I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm in Texas working with Jack from Jack's World of Wildlife, searching for some of North America's most iconic wildlife. And somewhere deep in this forest, Jack and his cameraman have found giant black widows. So we're heading out in search of giant venomous spiders. Right now I am scanning this area for the type of webbing I'm looking for. I'm looking for brown recluse webbing, which is very wispy, thin. And I'm also looking for black widow webbing, which is very shiny, thick, and strong. I haven't seen anybody over here. It's always great to check these areas that have so much kind of gaps underneath bark and things like that because the arachnids love this shelter because it's dry, shelters from the rain. Uh, their egg sacs get wet, you know, it can kill all the babies inside. So um, the brown recluse will kind of adhere to the wall, but the black widows will find little kind of pockets that they can kind of shuffle into. They like tiny spaces where they can flee from predators. Once again, because they're quite, uh, quite skittish and scaredy spiders. These spiders are nocturnal. So while it's possible to find them under cover during the day, our best luck would come after dark. Got a widow on the crawl. This is, uh, I can't see the hourglass. We're looking for a northern. Are you a northern? It's a stripe. She's really small, though. Let's see. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, you're quick. Oh, I don't want to squish her. They're really delicate. She is webbing this place all up. There you go. Oh, it's a southern. That is a southern black widow. One of the other species we can get out here. Now, this is a southern black widow. This would be a juvenile. The reason I can tell is because there's still that red striping on the back. Uh, southern black widows are going to be totally black on their back, but I can tell it's southern because of that solid hourglass on her belly there. Now, southern black widows, one of the smaller of the widow spiders we have here in North America, and actually one of the less toxic. They are a lot more active when it is dark. They are a fairly nocturnal species. I've worked with this species before. During the daytime, they will kind of just sit still and uh, stay put on your arm, but this one is very active. Now, these spiders are still very venomous. Not something that I would recommend anybody just pick up like this, but as you can see here, they are extremely unlikely to bite. They are shy and reclusive, just like the brown recluse, hiding underneath logs, underneath debris, where they can kind of use that cover during the light time of day and uh, come out later at, after dark. They can actually advertise that they're venomous without even doing anything. Bright red on a jet black body is a form of aposematic warning coloration. These spiders tell you not to mess with them long before you even lay a hand on them. And uh, as you can see, I mean, she's walking around. She has no intention to bite me. Now I can say she, because these spiders are extremely easy to sex. That large abdomen or epistosoma is indicative of a female spider. There might be males hanging around, but they're really spindly, a lot smaller, and uh, as their name suggests, the black widow, they usually end up being lunch for the females. Their entire purpose in life is just to mate and pass on their genes, whereas the females can actually live for a few years and uh, produce many cases of black widow spiders. This is not the species we're looking for, but it is a gorgeous venomous spider here in Texas. And uh, hopefully, you are really, really on the move. Hopefully, we can find a giant northern black widow, or maybe even one of the fabled Latrodectus gigas out here in this little forest. This forest is packed with venomous creatures. There are copperheads around every single corner, but also one more infamous spider that I've never actually encountered in the wild before. This is not what we're looking for, but it's another one of the US's potentially significantly venomous spiders. This is a brown recluse. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab him real quick. Container. Right. I'll get him up close to the camera, but that is not a widow, but it's still very special. It's getting really dark and creepy out here, which is perfect to set the mood for a creepy little spider like this. That is, oh buddy, come out, a brown recluse spider. But it's kind of fitting that we get them when we're out here looking for widows. There's giant widows out here, and uh, this is actually very large male brown recluse. 
The jury is still out on how bad their venom actually is, but it's thought to be kind of hemotoxic and cytotoxic, very similar to a lot of the venomous snakes that we get out here. There's a lot of reports that these could cause necrotic bites that you might see from like a copperhead or something. But generally speaking, uh, a lot of those are just misdiagnosed infections and not actual serious envenomations from the spider. These spiders, as you can see right there, get their name recluse because they're actually very shy, very secretive, very inoffensive arachnids. They don't want anything to do with humans and they definitely do not want to bite. A bite's gonna happen in defense. Usually when you're like, you know, flipping something outside or in your house, these guys like to hide in cardboard and in like loose clothes or something that have been left on the ground for too long. If you're grabbing like clothes, you're not like sh shaking it out first or you're, you know, sticking your hands underneath a box or inside a cardboard area, one of these spiders might be hiding there what happens is you actually end up kind of squishing the spider and it'll bite as a last resort defense. Most of these spiders, as you can see, are very quick and very secretive, and they actually want to get away from you and hide rather than stand and fight. They're very soft bodied and their venom is really not designed for us. We're not prey to the spider. As you can see right here, if I really wanted to, I could just smush him on my hand. You know, he'd probably bite me in the process, but he'd die before I felt any effects of the venom if at all. So uh, this is not something that stands really any chance against a large mammal like me. And that venom is a very valuable resource. They're not gonna waste if they don't need to. You know, this is one of the most feared spiders in the country, but they're actually not that dangerous. Great little inclusion here on our hunt for the widows. Kind of nice to, to find another venomous spider out here. Hoping this is a good sign that some of the more toxic widows are nearby. We hiked into the night, following the path ever deeper into the forest. Up until now, we had seen no sign of the fabled giant widows. We had doubled back, getting ready to call it a night, and were basically just flipping logs to see if anything was underneath them, and planned to return to the site tomorrow to try again. Jack was off filming B-roll when he actually caught this on camera. Yo. Yeah. Widow, big one, I got him. Really? Yep, uh, I think it's in Northern. Yep, yep, there's a, Sorry, a mosquito buzzing in my face. Uh, that's, let's see. Looks like a northern. Oh, sorry. That uh, broken oh, yeah, hourglass, yeah. yep. 100%. She's big. Oh, yeah. She's really big. A gigas northern. <laughs> Is that the gigas? Yes, sir. I mean, that's what we call them. Yeah, I mean, it's a nickname. It's not a real, <laughs> so those of you watching, it's not a real <laughs> species, but uh, Gage and Jack here, they call the really big northern black widows out here Latrodectus gigas, but it's actually Latrodectus variolus and uh, have a look at that patterning there. A widow this big with that red stripe on the back is bound to be a northern. And just like the Australian redbacks, these guys are super, super venomous. This animal is one step less than the most venomous spider in North America, the red widow. And that patterning, that red on black, is really, really striking. And unlike the rhyme for the snakes, this spider absolutely has venom. And it is a potent, potent neurotoxin that will absolutely mess you up. A bite from this spider will give you a very, very serious reaction and a very, very rough few days. One thing a lot of people think they know about widows is that that hourglass on the bottom means that if you're bitten by the spider, you only have an hour to live. But that is not at all true. What the spider bite will actually do is put you in a lot of pain that no over-the-counter medication can really touch. It is a severe nerve pain. Now it's unlikely, I'm not putting any excess stress on the animal. It's unlikely that she will bite out of spite. They're not mean animals. They can be quick to defend themselves if they feel sufficiently threatened. A bite from the spider will happen generally in little crevices where they like to hide. So they might be hiding like underneath your sink or something. So you go to get like a cleaner or something from underneath there and they're hiding behind it and your fingers actually wrap around and actually squish her. She'll bite you as a quick defense. You'll feel a pinch and then very quickly that pain of the toxin will start to set in and uh, you'll be in for a world of hurt. And that is where most bites, reaching underneath stuff, not checking where your hand is going, that is where bites are going to occur from this spider. But they don't seek out humans. They're not looking to pick fights because, you know, I mean, look at how fat that abdomen is. If I wanted to, I could pop her like a grape, but that's not something I want to do because these are incredible, amazing arachnids and very, very misunderstood. You know, you can see right here, she is sitting, she's calm, she's chill. She's not a mean animal. She just wants to get back under her log to continue building her web and uh, go about her business. You know, I like to say these spiders are just simple creatures trying to make their way in the universe. 
They don't want anything to do with us. And the thing is, humans aren't their prey. This spider could take down small vertebrates, a lizard. I've even seen pictures of small, small birds and small mice getting caught in their incredibly strong web. Their web is incredibly strong, strong enough to stop those vertebrates. And it's actually one of the strongest materials on the planet, pound for pound even stronger than steel. And it's absolutely amazing to think about that a small little spider just like this can create, has enzymes in its body to create proteins that form a substance that is stronger than steel. That is just mind blowing to me that, that a spider like this can do something as incredible as that. You know, we, we think so much about their venoms, but you can see right here, she's sitting in my hand, absolutely chill. The spider's alive, he's not been hurt. She just is stressed out and doesn't really wanna have this interaction. You know, this is stressful and annoying for the spider, but I think it's necessary for people like you to hear how incredible this animal actually is. It's not something to be afraid of. It's actually a very, very important part of the ecosystem and a true gem of the natural world. The giant black widows were absolutely insane. And it's kind of crazy to think what kind of venom these spiders actually pack. Back home in North Carolina, I actually found another incredibly gnarly spider right in my own backyard. If you want to see that adventure, check it out right here. But until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.